Hey everyone, welcome to a special bonus Sounds Profitable product deep dive. I'm very excited here because Amelia Coomber, Chief Growth and Product Officer at Podscribe, is going to walk us through some of the AI features that they've been working on. It's going to be a little bit shorter than the normal ones, and I highly recommend that you check out the, the cards that we have on this video to link you to all of the other Podscribe product deep dives because they're fantastic. But AI is incredibly exciting right now. Everybody is really interested in learning more about it, and I thought this would be a great walkthrough for all of us. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brian. Heck yeah, Amelia. Let's dig into it. So what are we looking at and what what how does AI fit into Podscribe? Yes. All right. So um, we are at the show profile view. So for the Morning Wire, we've already walked through all of the details and the cool features we've added here. What I wanted to walk through is really the content rating. So we did something really cool recently. Um, we actually trained a chat GPT model on the GARM framework to better sort of piece together and bring, you know, what we like to say, like the nuance back to brand safety. So we call this our brand safety chat GPT, brand safety GPT, whatever you want to call it. Um, but again, we trained chat GPT on the GARM framework um, and are now using this to actually do the brand safety scoring um, and um, and sort of like reasoning and whatnot. And so for people who don't know, GARM is the Global Alliance of Responsible Media. It has a really cool framework that I, I think is really impressive. A lot of brand safety companies have, have followed it. It is meant to be, uh, I think it's like 12 or 12 to 16 different um, uh, like categories mm -hmm. of where something might be, uh, you know, unsafe or or just an awareness of what's going on in that content. And then there's different um, like sensitivity levels yep. of it, right? Like it, it varies from, you know, low, medium, high. Uh, and as you're showing off there, which is great. And these are um, these are becoming a, a strong standard for people to benchmark against through all the different tools out here. So what a, what's exciting about this new area of brand safety and suitability and a technical play is that we've all kind of agreed that Garm is the right way to do it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and and before I talk about why you know using ChatGPT trained on Garm in brand safety is so cool and and so unique, um, I you know I do want to preface that like at the end of the day, Podscribe is still a verification and an attribution company. We saw this new feature because we don't we're not a brand safety company. We don't want to become a brand safety company. We really saw an opportunity with ChatGPT and this new technology to help sort of add a new suite of tools into to our verification and our, you know, planning and research package. So while, you know, our bread and butter is verification and attribution, um, we hadn't seen anybody really take advantage of chat TBT, um, especially when it came to brand safety or GARM yet. And, and it was something we wanted to sort of offer. So um, we are still very, very focused on attribution and verification. We just wanted to, you know, test out this really, really cool new tool that we believed would provide a lot of value um, to both advertisers and publishers. So, so you transcribe an episode and you run it through this chain train chat GPT with the GARM framework yes. attached to it. And it's gives us this visualization. It does. And this visualization looks very similar to the one you've, you've seen um, the brand safety tool on Podscribe before. But the coolest thing about it, Brian, um, and, and just to preface this, right, like usually brand safety is done through like keywords or like metadata, right? So, you know, I, I, you know, for profanity, I'm looking for the F word or I'm looking, you know, for elements of hate speech. Maybe it's, you know, um, different, you know, political things. And it's all really based on keywords. Um, that can become a problem, right? Because if I'm a news podcast and I quote something that some political person said, and maybe it in included hate speech, that show might then be docked as contributing to hate speech because keywords can't understand that that was a quote they were quoting yeah. and that's not their post personal views. Yeah, keyword keyword density is the wrong way to do it. It, exactly. it hurts the news. It hurts all that. The quote thing is very interesting. I've dug into that before. There are specifics of it. If you're yeah. a news source and whatnot, how you have to paraphrase it or how you have to go about it to uh, if something is inflammatory or, or or dangerous to not say it entirely. And so that's the interesting thing. They're flagging that and showing all the pieces there for awareness. What I like, you're showing this here, and it, for everybody who's watching this, like like you're these are sentences that are explaining what happened in the podcast. This isn't these words were said. This is showing you here are the things that caused us to put a dot 
on here. Here's what it is. Here's the like our interpretation using chat GPT of it so that you can pass judgment. Because at the end of the day, some of these things may not be a problem to you. The one that you had on terrorism there was talking about the president's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, like the, the consequences of uh, President Biden withdrawing from the country uh, and mentions ISIS and all of that. Like that's opinion based on terror, right? Like mm -hmm. there's a difference between talking about a terrorist threat. There's a difference between so many different aspects here. You might view that and go, that's okay, but you got to view that, right? Exactly. Like that's the power there. You got to say yes or no. Exactly. So, and that's, that's ChatGPT, right? It is, it, it understands. And if anybody's, you know, if you've ever used ChatGPT, if anybody listening to this has used ChatGPT, it, it knows when you ask it something, when you tell it to rewrite something, like it understands. And so that's really the difference here. You, you know, it's just like, you know, if you and I were to go through and try to manually score stuff, we wouldn't notice that, you know, that quote, that wouldn't have been a factor. So similar to, um, you know, for chat GBT, it, it really is like acting like a human that can understand the reasoning, the context and the nuance of this. So to your point, every single one of these first, what, you know, a lot of the, you know, brand safety tools where it would just show you, um, you know, the keywords that it was flagging, it's actually giving you a, like a real human reason. This podcast discusses the use of firearms in two shooting incidents and the implications of the castle doctrine. That's not a quote that the podcast doesn't have that line inside of the transcription. This is Chad GPT looking at all of the information, mm -hmm. doing, looking at all of the pod, um, the episodes and actually summarizing what they're seeing on various episodes. Because you um, trained it to to detect each one of those criteria and determine what is low, medium, high. And then on top of that, you're passing at the transcript and you're saying, if you, when reading this, find this as the AI, then paraphrase quickly, ideally it looks like one sentence, what, what flagged that for you? So it's not keyword, but it's, it's reading and digesting as well as an AI can right now, which is honestly it's, it's pretty there. great. It's, it's pretty, pretty good. Great. It's pretty um, good. But, and what's cool about this is this is a directional tool still, right? Like you're allowed to look at that and say, that doesn't bother me. That isn't an issue. You're allowed to, uh, like, this isn't making real time decisioning. This is giving you insights. Yep, absolutely. And this is a really good example too. So this one um, is under um, drugs and substances. So this is the mention of FDA approval of pill use in abortions, but in the context of news reporting and not promoting or glamorizing drug use. Right there is the perfect example of how chat GPT understands. It could have easily just said it's talking about these things, but instead it's saying and giving, you know, whoever's looking at this from a brand safety perspective, it's telling you that it's talking about these things in the the context of news. It's not promoting or glamorizing these things. And so again, now, now you read this and you see this flag as more of a, you know, the fact-based opinion rather than something, um, again, that is glamorizing or is inflammatory. So this is a perfect example of, you know, really where you could see it understands. Not a single part of the, you know, transcription actually has this line in here. It's summarizing those things and it's actually able to like do that opinion scoring. It can tell if something is, you know, again, um, if it is glamorizing it, if it's, you know, inflammatory, or if it's just mentioning this in, in a very informational and educational context. Yeah. I mean, that's beautiful. And now this is available for all of the shows that you guys transcribe. Uh, like it's, it's just in the platform right now. So um, we're actually only um, training this on a specific subset of shows right now. We have a wait list. Um, mm -hmm. You can go check that wait list out on, on Podscribe and, and sign up. Um, obviously, this is a new technology, Brian, right? Like, and it's, it's real. we just agreed. It's, it's like, you know, maybe 99, 95% there, but there are still a lot of, you know, bugs and things that you have to work out, especially, um, you know, as ChatGPT and, and, you know, these sort of, you know, GANs, um, you know, gender adversarial networks sort of improve. Um, and so, we really wanted to, you know, one, allow the shows that would benefit from this most start to use it and help, you know, refine what they're seeing, how it's been helpful. Again, really approaching it and, and building our products directly with the clients that we work with. So we wanted to, one, do that. Um, and two, you know, importantly, Obviously, because this is so new and because brand safety is such a sensitive thing, um, you know, we, we don't want to, you know, impact the industry or, yeah. um, you know, impact any show in, in a negative, you know, way. So we wanted to take, you know, a couple of weeks to really refine this, um, and make sure that it was up to the standards we would be comfortable with allowing it, um, you know, to sort of open up to the public. 
And I think you're in a really good position to do that because of the fact that a part of like transcription is such a big part of what you do. You've been using models to transcribe things, but you do have a team of people who clean up the context and make sure things are human readable, spelled correctly, all of the important parts there, double check things that the AI wasn't sure about. So you're set up to process this. But I, I appreciate that you have caution in it. Brand safety and suitability is something that we still haven't determined who pays for, mm -hmm. how it's used. And, and people think about it is subtractive. I think about it a lot of as additive. When is there a show that you would write off for whatever reason uh, because of association in one way or another that when you look through actually scores everything low and medium, right? Yep. There, are, there are a substantial amount of shows that are like that. And this could give you the insight or the comfort with spending with them. But however, I mean, we see a few red flags here. Don't need you to pull those up. They might not be particularly <laughs> brand safe for a deep dive. But yeah. the advantage here, the advantage here really is that this is as you're testing this and as you're working with these partners, the publishers that you're working with have the ability to go in here, look at it, say this does or doesn't work for us, give you the feedback and help you improve the model. Exactly, exactly. That's that's all we want to do. And and you were even just talking about it, Brian, in, in one of your articles recently. Um, you know, news as a you know a, a a category to advertise in is, is really, really difficult. And they've sort of been written off for a really long time. And so we see a lot of opportunity and we sort of, again, say like, bring the nuance back to news to sort of use this, you know, chat GBT and a better understanding to help, you know, fill in, you know, the gaps that this keyword um, and, um, you know, related sort of brand safety has, has maybe not painted the best picture for a lot of these news podcasts. Well, Amelia, thank you so much for walking through the innovations that you're doing with AI and chat GPT at Podscribe. I I think it is incredibly exciting and everybody who's interested on it, make sure you're following Amelia, Pete, the entire Podscribe team and on Twitter, on LinkedIn, everywhere, because they're going to be talking about this more and more and being able to be hands on with it and try it out is I think the best way to learn about it. I'm starting to dig into this stuff more and more myself and I enjoy it and it helps me understand the boundaries and understand what is and isn't possible. And I think all of you should try and carve out a little bit of time to do that as well. So please reach out to the Podscribe team for a direct demo of this product and all of their other amazing pod, uh, and all of their other amazing products. Thank you, Amelia, so much for joining me on this bonus product deep dive. Thanks, Brian. Mm -hmm.